I am a certified senior advisor, it's just as you are. And I'd like to just share some information with you about how the long-term care insurance plans work. So I want to thank you for joining us today for this conversation. And I think as professionals and trusted advisors, we can truly help our customers understand what happens when caregiving is necessary and long-term care insurance is in play. I've been in the seniors planning industry for over 30 years to help families look ahead towards significant times in their lives, funeral pre-planning, and long-term care planning. And I have many experiences to share with you to help you help your customers. My guess is that most of you haven't even experienced caregiving and all that is associated with this life-changing event. Having planned ahead by answering the question, What's the plan for long-term care? What do we want to happen? Families don't even have to blow apart trying to find the answers. As CSAs, we must be prepared to know how to help people through this crisis. All right, let's get started then. <clears throat> and no doubt, even if you haven't personally experienced caregiving or know someone who has provided care for a family member, you can imagine the stress and heartache watching someone you love try to recover or face a long period of being cared for on a daily basis. Now I'm going to be talking about my recent caregiving story with you and what others tell me they're going through, some valuable information for you to know, step by step about what you can do, and some resources for you. This should just be about 40 minutes long. So I hope that you will, uh, if, you, if you aren't able to stay with us the entire time, that you'll listen to it in the archives at CSA. Now, I hope you'll learn from my recent experience with my husband's claim. Here we are in the parade and we get to ride the ladder truck because he's the head of the fire department board of directors in our community. His name is Chick. And he had some arthritis in his hands and feet for years but continued to work and really had no restriction. And all of a sudden, on May 12, 2010, our lives turned upside down when he hit the floor with excruciating back pain. He'd never had any back problems. Our close friends in the department took him by ambulance to the hospital where he stayed for almost 10 nights. Just so you know, it wasn't an elderly issue, an accident, or an onset of an illness. We call it an incident that can happen to anyone at any time, at any age. Now when he came home, he needed skilled care and rehab through Medicare and Blue Cross Blue Shield long-term care insurance policy, and they need some help figuring it out. I would suggest you call the 800 number and get the help that they need to explain it, but also the policy brochure and the outline of coverage that they have at their home, that will tell you what the benefits will be. So that'll be what you'll want to read to know what you're explaining to them out of their policy. The policies today are comprehensive coverage. You can stay at home, go to adult daycare, assisted living, a dementia care facility, nursing home, or have hospice in a facility or at home. Some of the early policies were just home care only or nursing home only, and they just didn't cover all these levels of care that have continued to evolve since about the early 90s. A daily or a maximum, monthly maximum benefit, that's to spend wherever you are. And I always recommend that if the policy does have a monthly benefit, that you're not limited to so much daily that you can draw out of a pool of money that you're buying in a long-term care insurance policy. So let's say that you have $500,000 in the policy, and you can draw out of that maybe $6,000 a month to pay for your care. You don't have to use it all because the bills will get you the reimbursement from the insurance company. But let's say you did use the $6,000 every single month. You aren't limited to a daily maximum of $200 and nothing above that. So I like the monthly benefit for the home care. That pool of money is what an insured is buying with an annual premium and they can draw off of that pool of money by so much a day or so much a month. 
The care coordination is free. It's included in the plan, and they will help. This is the person, social worker or nurse, who will work with the doctor, work with the family, work with the caregivers to write a plan of care and follow that plan of care. It's the insured, the person who has the policy, and the family who gets to decide where they are, where the care is going to be given, and by whom. The elimination period, we talked about that. It's a time before the policy benefits are paid. And then there's no premiums due once you're on claim. So once the claim is approved by the carrier, then there is no more premium to pay as long as that elimination period has been passed. The benefit payments could be assigned to someone, to a home care agency or a relative, nursing home, or they could be directly paid to the insured. Now, if you're uncertain about how a long-term care insurance policy works, um, find out what this person wants, how to get to the 800 number, and talk to them about it so that you can be the resource. I know that I've helped some people file claims that are policyholders of mine or of friends, and I can't talk to the claims department without a power of attorney. And this is very often true that a family member or a friend who's calling to file the claim needs to be, have a power of attorney to be able to talk about medical issues. And that's pretty easy to get and fax to the insurance company to continue the claim. And then I also think that it's good for you to share your own stories. To, if you have a caregiving story, help your customers understand if, you have, if that person had insurance or did not have insurance and how that went for your family. I know that long-term care can blow families apart and ruin relationships and there's a lot of drama involved and I think it's so much easier when there's already a plan in place. Now the next one is tell your customer of course that you'll be there to provide guidance when a claim is necessary. It's always good if you know a geriatric social worker maybe in your location there so that you can ask them for questions and get some answers for your own customer too. Just know the resources in your community, how to access them, and how to make them work especially hard for your own customer or your own friend or family member. I always say walk in their shoes and you be their lifeline. So when you get the call from a valued customer that something has happened, the caller or the person needing care is in a crisis, you'll become their lifeline. If you don't know what to do, they'll know it. You can tell them you're sorry and to call the 800 number to file a claim, or you can be their local resource. You would have taken the steps to know what their policy covers and how to access the care coordinator. You're familiar with the various levels of care offered in your community, and you have the names of people to contact. Which way would you want to go? Why would you want not walk with them as they experience the need for help and the changing roles of caregiving? Giving somebody a 1-800 number just doesn't do it for me and it doesn't do it for them. I think it's our responsibility as professionals to know what they don't know. So our CSA training modules include more information about planning for long-term care. And if you've recently taken the CSA course, then you might want to consider doing so on a regular basis so that you'll be updated on what's going on in the long-term care industry. So let's think of for just a minute. By staying in touch with your valued customers, they'll remember to call you when an illness or accident occurs that will require them to seek support. Without you, they'll be navigating on their own and need, may need more than just calling that 800 number to file a claim. They trust you to be there as their advisor and you should always tell them that you will be. I think it's important that we continue to learn. You can search online. You can read articles about caregiving. There are wonderful resources. And as long as you continue to learn through the CSA process, too, and all of the publications that we have in the information, then you will be prepared to answer these kinds of questions. So I know I've covered quite a bit of ground today, and I hope I've provided you with helpful ideas that will turn into actions for you. So I think I'll turn this back over to Erica, see if there are any additional comments you'd like to add, Erica. And thank everyone for joining me today.